Hello and welcome back everybody to the Food Build Factory where today we're going to take a look at the Tribal Queen. That's the girl you can see on screen right now. And as always I'm going to show you some gameplay in the first part of the video and in the second part of the video we're going to take a look at the perks, mutations and everything else you need to know. Now this is going to be the first, uh, first character of this here week. Where the theme I want to go for this week is all about uh, tribals. Now, the tribalistic uh, part of the Fallout franchise, I think it's a bit more uh, prominent in the older games. Um, certainly not a big part in Fallout 76 or Fallout 4 for that matter, but it's always been kind of an interesting uh, part for me at least, uh, when it comes to the Fallout franchise. Now, seeing how cultures and uh, groups of people would develop into a more tribalistic uh, nature over time after uh, such a apocalyptic disaster, it's kind of an interesting theme I just uh, very much enjoy. And also there's always been, uh, there has always been a ton of very interesting weapons in the Fallout franchise that make for a very cool aesthetic um, combined with makeshift armor and people just I don't know like making uh, armor and weaponry out of stuff that's available uh, is a is an interesting uh, kind of twist to the whole post-apocalyptic vibe uh, where you have these very high-tech weaponry and everything and I would love to see this a bit uh, being explored a bit more in Fallout 76. Now, obviously, uh, the whole setting of Fallout 76 doesn't really fit this all that well for the simple reason that it's just a little bit soon after the war. Um, what is it now canonically? Uh, 25 or 26 years, I think we are now. Um, 26 years after the bombs fell. So, um, by the way, just a little side note if you see my. Um, character looking upwards very fast or anything um, don't pay it a lot of attention it's just a, um, a bit of a bug with my controller at the moment it's broken I don't know what's up um, controller is barely a few weeks old and already X up um, in the next video I'm going to uh, use my older controller should work better than um, been a bit unlucky there uh, when it comes to vets and yeah, I hope it's not getting too annoying. Uh, it's kind of a phase. Every now and then my controller does this for a few minutes and then it gets better again. But well, I hope it's okay for the video. Uh, back to the topic. Yeah, we're there's not a whole lot of time that has passed uh, since the bombs dropped. So yeah, most people you would encounter in Appalachia um, have seen life in either the vault or uh, before the vault even so yeah there's only a small like one generation that maybe grew up in uh, a post-apocalyptic world but still I feel like there could now be the first uh, kind of tribes building now obviously they wouldn't have lost um, a big part of by the way manual aiming is really hard with this here kind of flickering um, controller it's not a big thing about uh, this character anyways, we're using vets a whole lot, so it doesn't bother us too much. Okay, we're teleporting now. Man, it really starts to get worse. I really hope I don't have to restart the video. Okay, it's really starting to mess with me. Fighting actually. Okay, there's an assault run. Oh, we're not over encumbered. Well, let's see. Let's hope that the assault run isn't cloaked, but I guess it is. I mean, it didn't detect us so far, but. Okay, it's in the distance there. Once it's uncloaked again, I think another crit should finish the job. Really stealthy guy. 
Now these stealth heals, especially in the forest, are extremely hard to follow. Now they're kind of easy in certain situations. Um, you can track the laser a little bit, as you can see here, but yeah, for the most part, um, cloaking fields within shrubbery, like here between the trees, especially at night, yeah, it's very hard to uh, follow them. Well, anyways, back to the topic again. Um, I feel like my controller, by the way, has um, kind of regenerated its health pool a little bit, I hope at least. Yeah, I think we could see uh, the first uh, tribe starting um, that make more and more makeshift weaponry and armor and everything. And, well, I would like to see that explored. Now, finally, let's get in a little bit on the uh, build itself, because it's something I haven't done at all so far, which is kind of surprising, because, yeah, it's, it's not something very out of the ordinary or anything. It's a stealth archer. So, um, I mean, the, I guess most of you probably have uh, noticed already, just from the gameplay here. We're playing as a stealth archer. Um, for some reason, I never really gotten into um, showcasing a archer build. Um, I was close to doing so um, at a few points, actually. But every time I done so, um, something else just happened and another build came through and I needed this here gunslinger, or usually it's a gunslinger, um, to do something else. And therefore, I never really went through with it up until now. Um, Basically, there's not a whole lot to say about uh, the Archer, actually. I do quite enjoy the build, and I think it's actually quite good. Um, comparable to a, a Stealth Rifleman, if not very similar. Now, as you can see here, we're making quick work of the Scorch Beast, actually. So, I even prefer the Archer, uh, the Stealth Archer, to Stealth Rifleman in a lot of ways. Um, and one of the big drawbacks um, you see mentioned when it comes to archers every now and then is that their DPS is, is quite bad. But I actually don't even think that's the case. I generally believe that um, archers have quite decent uh, DPS actually. Now obviously it's not comparable to a stealth commando or a power armor heavy gunner. Those would definitely uh, out DPS this character here. But compared to a Stealth Rifleman, for example, you're probably doing more DPS, actually. The thing is, yeah, okay, you have to reload every single um, arrow, but you never have to bother with a magazine reload, and the reload is actually relatively fast. Now, I do have a slight suspicion, I haven't really tested this um, uh, out all that much, but I feel like um, in third person you're definitely reloading faster, or redrawing actually, I guess is the right term. Now the weapon is naturally very silent, so I, I think it's as silent as it gets actually, but yeah, uh, redrawing the arrow is not a big problem, so usually taking two shots for enemies, which doesn't happen all that often. Uh, on this here character isn't all that big of a, of a downside for me. Um, definitely works far, faster than with a hunting rifle, for example. Um, one good example of a weapon or a comparison, I guess, uh, in terms of fire rate would probably be a, a lever action. The lever action might be a tad bit faster, but not by much, in my opinion. Unless, obviously, you have something like a faster fire rate version or so. But, yeah. So, as you can see here, we're making quick work of everything. Now, uh, one little bit of information I'm giving away here is uh, we're using an instigating bow. Um, with the, re the rest of the perks are that's crit, ba uh, crit based. So, um, I'm using one approach that I'm doing quite often. Uh, actually, that's the main reason I'm often using this character here. Um, it's getting uh, 23. Yeah, I think it's 23 luck um, due to, uh, with some help of Under Armour, uh, a few pieces of uh, gear with extra luck, and the legendary luck, um, yeah, boosting my luck up to 23. And that in combination with the faster Vest Crits effect makes it so that we can refill our uh, critical meter within a single shot. 
Now, I hope it works on this occasion, as sometimes it doesn't really work, but yeah, as you saw here, it did. I feel like we're in danger, actually, um, just from the damage we're dealing. Now, we're, we're a bit lucky, uh, unlucky there when it came to our hits. Um, missed three hits and uh, missed three shots in a row, I think. But yeah. Please keep in mind um, if you see these hiccups. Yeah, it's definitely um, something wrong with my controller doing these hicks every now and then. Um, if anyone of you uses a PS5 controller, by the way, and has a similar problem, um, le let me know. Would be cool here um, to hear your story about it. But yeah. Let's move on, we're going to Huntersville now, fighting some Super Mutants. And Super Mutants are one of the more frustrating enemies, actually. Um, because they're... I mean, once your adrenaline is going up, you can quite sufficiently uh, one-shot them um, if you're going for the heads. Um, the thing is, the weapon is really good at range, and doesn't really lose a lot of damage over high range. Um, the problem is the hit chance. So what I like to do is I like to go for good shots like this here. So for torso shots on weaker enemies. So yeah, maybe we will need two shots or anything. But keep in mind, with a single shot we can refill our critical meter. And so we're usually taking two shots to a body of a weaker enemy and then switch kill it in the process and then um, kill the next enemy with a crit. So no reason to use the crit on the second hit here and by the way we could have just dispatched this guy with a single shot but yeah there should be a level 100 guy in there which we can take down with a with a crit. There he is. Went down smoothly. Now here the hit chance isn't great here. Now it's better using the crit again. So as you can see here, you just have to get in or form a little bit of a habit um, with this weapon um, in a way you're using it. But after that, yeah, it works like a charm. Now, one thing that's important in my opinion when it comes to the bow is it can be very unsatisfying in a way simply because, yeah, um, single... Uh, same problem that the Gauss weapons have, quite simply. Okay, bit of a locked health pool there. Um, yeah, the same problem that Gauss weapons have in my opinion, which is, yeah, constantly drawing the weapon um, really kind of messes with your index finger, in my opinion. Like, if you're playing this character for a period of maybe like two to three hours, yeah, you really start to notice that uh, it's getting uncomfortable. Um, to keep your uh, weapon drawn all the time. Now, what I tend to use is I do have a backup weapon, um, which is a unnecessary aerosol, by the way, uh, which is an anti armor crossbow, quite simple. Now, it's not really the best thing when it comes to um, super mutants. It doesn't have good range, the um, accuracy is pretty lackluster, in my opinion, but yeah, for tools and everything it works uh, fine enough and that's basically what I'm using it for and just when I'm a bit sick of using the bow itself but on the other hand yeah using the bow isn't that big of a problem here we have a bit of a problem going on here with hits not really registering um, something with my with the server I guess but anyways I think you still get a pretty good picture of how the uh, weapon works out and build. Um, yeah, Stealth Archer, obviously we're not getting detected, we pretty much never do. Um, full set of chameleon armor, high agility, all that fancy stuff. Now uh, let's just dispatch some stuff here that I might want to keep. Okay, actually we're carrying a Tesla rifle around that we're not going to use, so just let's get rid of that and move on here. Um, the damage output is good in my opinion, especially the weapon performs well in what you would expect, one-shotting enemies. Now you really want to have a good legendary version. Um, the thing is, if you're having a standard version, yeah, you just have to accept the fact that you're using two shots per enemy, but on the other hand, as you can see here, even if in theory we can pretty much one-shot everything, 
yeah, the weapon can be kind of inconsistent. Uh, another thing I noticed is that, yeah, it seems to... Mm, the, the vet hit chance that's uh, shown seems to be a little bit bugged oftentimes. Like, it definitely seems like you're missing more 95% uh, vet hit chance uh, shots than you should. I mean, on most weapons you definitely... Um, get a hit in with a 95% chance, but on the bow it does quite often happen that, yeah, the shot just doesn't register or anything. But if it does, it's very satisfying, works very well with Gun Fu, uh, and the whole build is just overall very fun. Um, another big bonus point, in my opinion, is that usually bows aren't really all that expensive if you're going to trade for them. Uh, by the way, I'm just trying to get a good chain of Gun Fu here, which worked out perfectly here. So, yeah. Just not enough, like by a tiny bit. But would have been very satisfying to one-shot the Deathclaw here. It's something I really like to do on this little patch there, um, since you do have so uh, such uh, low HP critters. You can really work with Gun Fu or pop your adrenaline up there. So, yeah, really like that position. Now here we can show off something that I meant earlier, which is using the lower enemies to just farm your crits so you are prepared for the bigger threats. Now on this occasion we don't really need to bother with the crit because this is when our crit comes in handy. Doing a crit on a second shot is even more beneficial than doing it with the instigating effect um, due to the fact that nowadays instigating uh, is an additive bonus, meaning it just adds one base, uh, one times the base damage of your weapon, which on a bow works better than on a lot of other weapons. And yeah, we're definitely over encumbered again, but who doesn't want that mutant's broadside there? And after all, we're stealth build, so who cares if we are over encumbered? I think we can even place down our survival tent here. Okay, we can. We gonna. Uh, we're going to finish the rest of the video with that um, downside of being over encumbered. Um, let's keep a little bit of range here. Okay, I saw we had a bad crit ready, but yeah, kind of failed to use that running out of AP here, so we might have to wait a little bit and hope that we're getting lucky with Grim Reaper Sprint. We didn't. Not a try. We didn't. Using a crit here. And yet again, we didn't get lucky. Feels a bit painful at the moment. Let's see some manual shots here. Uh, the weapon works better uh, with manual shots nowadays, in my opinion, than it did uh, when it came out. In general, uh, the weapon performs way better than when it came out, um, also in bats. So, even though I would go so far as to say that Bethesda hasn't really fixed the problems, it's definitely gotten better. And the last thing I wanted to touch in terms of gameplay and everything, um, ammo actually. Now a lot of especially newcomers can be really frustrated and please don't be stuck here uh, with the weapon because its ammo can be yeah it's, it's relatively expensive um, using aluminium and aluminium and little aluminum. There is an ongoing debate as far as I know if it's aluminum or aluminium. That's actually tough to pronounce everything. Um, and yeah, this, going through a lot of adhesive and aluminium uh, could definitely be a downside when it comes to, to the ammunition. But what I tend to do here is uh, something I recommend every now and then with my builds, but on this here it works very well. Um, it is farming ammo with daily ops. Get a, de a decryption daily op, it's perfectly suited for you. Um, you may be a build slow in order to uh, finish it in times to get the elder rank. Uh, definitely possible though, depending on the enemies of course. I mean, if it's something like cloaking super mutants, it will be hard, but yeah, the, today's uh, daily op are volatile mole miners, I think, and I've just done it and more so to farm um, ammo actually than to actually 
finishes for the rewards and I easily uh, managed to do uh, the second tier not elder uh, paladin rank or anything I don't know but I'm pretty sure I would have been able to finish it on elder if I really wanted to and the point I was making here is yeah I done that um, daily op once and was back from 100 arrows or so to up to uh, a thousand nearly a thousand so if you really want to farm it yeah within half an hour I guess you can get up to two to three uh, three thousand arrows which are just going to weigh you down so I wouldn't really bother uh, or fear the ammo consumption here it's actually quite under control now, one thing uh, I wanted to mention, last thing, I, I promise, um, yeah, I think the bow looks kind of ugly and just way too plain and simple. Um, there are a few skins, um, the Flatwoods, Flatwoods Fletcher one, um, looks a bit nicer, but looks a bit more, um, a bit more modern, which didn't really uh, fit the character, and the one that I really would have loved uh, to have here is one for Mothman cultists or anything. Yeah, that one would have worked quite well, but I didn't have skin. So, yeah, that's everything I wanted to say. Queen or King Grognag outfit, by the way, um, with the Skinner, Raider Skinner hood and the Skull Mask. Closest to what I could make a tribal look, um, actually. But I do have two other uh, visuals going for the week, uh, two other builds. What you can expect is a heavy gunner, power armor, but rusty and raider looking. And the other one will be... I actually forgot. I'm kind of stupid, sorry. Um, yeah, you're going to see this week. And now that was it when it comes to gameplay. Um, despite my controller problem, I actually think we managed to do quite well. Now... Especially dealing with uh, scorch beasts and anything works way better than you'd probably expect from a semi-automatic uh, build. Uh, obviously, it depends a little bit on your luck when it comes to bad hit chances and so on. But the damage output is definitely great. And even though we're using an instigating weapon, the fact that we're getting a lot of crits and have follow through makes it so that yeah, even bosses you can do really uh, significant amounts of damage. Um, obviously, it would be a very good idea to keep an anti-armor uh, bow with the same other effects that I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, that would work out very well, but yeah. I hope you enjoyed it so far, and now we're getting into the more details of the build. Now, first and foremost, we're going to look into the mutations. On this occasion, we do have Bird Bones, Chameleon, Eagle Eyes, Egghead, Herbivore, Marsupial, Speed Demon, and Unstable Isotope. Chameleon, as well as Unstable Isotope, both don't really have any negative effects for us, even though we're not needing them. Um, Chameleon doesn't work as we're wearing armor, so it's just there and does nothing. And Unstable Isotope, yeah, we have a chance to radiate melee attackers if they attack us, but since we're a melee character, uh, a stealth character, that doesn't really happen. So, yeah, those are just redundant uh, Chameleon and Unstable Isotope. The rest here is more important. Bird Bones, first and foremost, more agility means better sneak, more action points for vets. Very beneficial here. Um, the debuff to strength is relatively insignificant because, yeah, we're not using strength for, any for anything. So, yeah, Bird Bones, quite a no-brainer in my opinion. Same as Eagle Eyes, which you can see down there. Um, crit damage, we're using vets, and half of our shots are crits, so extra crit damage plain benefit and extra perception just giving us a little bit more hit chance even though we have quite significant um, uh, sorry perception already and the bow is quite a precise weapon so overall eagle eyes bird bones no brainers here egghead well just a little bit more intelligence and the debuffs are relatively unimportant um, firstly we do run class 3 um, as far as I remember I'm yeah, I'm not exactly sure. No, I don't think we run class freak. We'll see in a minute. But um, anyways, strength debuff, absolutely uninteresting to us because uh, with the four uh, minus strength from bird bones, we should be already down to one strength anyways. And endurance, well, obviously it makes us a little bit less tanky, but we're stealth character. We don't want to get hit anyways. So therefore, 
minus endurance doesn't do a whole lot to us either. Herbivore, very interesting here, uh, mainly interested in Blight too, but yeah, there's a plethora of good um, AP refresh and XP boosting um, buffs you can get from um, Herbivore, from plant or vegetations. So keep an eye out for those, I didn't really show them off in the video, Not very, uh, I wasn't using any of them, but it definitely works. You could live without it though. Marsupial, yeah, always there, more carry weight, more jump height. And lastly, we do have speed demon here, um, faster reload speed, faster movement speed. Now, especially on a sneak character and so on, I feel like faster movement speed is nice just to close gaps between character, uh, be between enemies and move around faster, quite obviously. And the reload speed is obviously a nice thing to have on a bow. Um, never really had a bow with faster reload, so I can't really tell how that would work out, but yeah. A bit more reload speed and in general movement speed from Speed Demon is definitely nice here. Um, Spethel, for those of you who are interested, as I said, strength is down to 1, endurance is down to 2, and charisma is down to 3, so that are our dump stats. But the rest is pretty high there, so perception at 16 could definitely be better. There are some good buffs that you can get to perception from uh, the herbivore mutation meaning from uh, vegetations and so on. There's some good tea and so on, if I can remember, that can really help you out there. Um, then we do have Intelligence at 12, which is kind of okay. We're leveling quite well. Um, could be higher, though, but here the most important part is Agility 21 for a good sneak and a lot of action points, and here 23 luck. That's the important part that makes this in with our Instigating Bow here. Um, instigating, meaning double uh, base damage, if your enemy is at full health, which most of the time they are, to be honest. Um, then we do have bad crits doing more damage, which, which works perfectly well with our last uh, perk here. Your bad critical meter fills 15% faster. As I said, this in combination with critical savvy perk and 23 luck makes it so that within a single shot we can refill our crit bar, meaning half of our uh, shots are crits, which is absolutely amazing. Um, if you don't have that VAT effect, um, the only other chance to achieve that, other than through random chances with certain perks, um, is to get your luck up to 34, I guess it is, which, uh, as far as I know, uh, if you're not using buffs, it's only possible with a bloody build. Relatively easy, though. So, yeah, that's the uh, weapon here. I went for Ultrasight Arrows because, as I said, um, I really think the most efficient way to gather uh, ammo for this weapon is to farm daily ops. So, crafting requirements are relatively redundant. I mean, craft a batch of 20 uh, arrows and you're fine to go from there on. Um, join the next um, decryption. Um, so, uh, daily op and just farm your way up. Within an hour, you will be set for the next two days or so. And other than that, yeah, the ultrasight arrows just give us a plain damage boost. Um, the other arrows, I'm just not really convinced. Um, I think the best option, if you don't want to use ultrasight arrows, would probably be plasma arrows. They're kind of cool. Um, the explosive ones, while they don't really mess with your stealth directly, uh, meaning that the weapon is still silent, but the explosion itself makes your enemies nearby be in alert status and actively seek out enemies and so on, so it makes it harder to sneak. You can definitely pull it off, but yeah, I'm not a big fan of explosive arrows on a stealth archer. And yeah, the iron sights just give us a bit more uh, range and accuracy, I think it is. So yeah, nothing really crazy about this bow, I just like the effects here, and obviously a, how's it called, compound bow would be better, just more damage. I think range and accuracy are kind of kind of similar. Uh, I think the fire rate is actually a bit better on the instigating bow, uh, on the standard bow, so that might be a thing to take into consideration. But yeah, enough time spent on this here weapon. Um, well, I could show off the other uh, the crossbow here, anti-armor vets crits. Um, standard frame, iron sight, so I didn't really bother to uh, equip any special um, frame here to give me explosive or plasma or whatever um, bolts, so keep that in mind. It's just a fun little sidearm though. And here it is, our uh, chameleon set, five pieces here. I think two pieces have extra luck. 
Yeah. Now three pieces of extra luck. Two pieces of extra intelligence. And yeah, that's basically it. All shadowed, ultralight, muffled, y you name it. Um, the standard stuff for a stealth character, to be honest. And well, as for Under Armour, I went for the Shield Vault Suit. I needed that just in order to get my luck up to 23. Obviously, if you have access to more legendary luck, um, the better option here would probably be to go for um, Shielded Raider Under Armour, giving you just a bit more um, perception and agility. So that would be more beneficial because actually uh, the extra strength and endurance doesn't really do anything for us here. Um, the luck is just necessary. Uh, but you would get one extra luck anyways from uh, Shielded Raider Under Armour. And yeah, the intelligence can kind of nice, but that's about it here. And now let's get into the perks. Um, we do have five in strength for Bandolier and Traveling Pharmacy. Now, Bandolier, I definitely recommend. The uh, arrows can weigh you down quite a lot if you're not using Bandolier. So I would consider them a must-have, actually, um, the perk. Uh, as for Traveling Pharmacy, that comes pretty much entirely from uh, Legendary Strength, if I recall correctly. And yeah, it's just because I have a lot of... Uh, cams and then stim packs and so on on this character and I don't want to be over encumbered but you could definitely live without it if you have the stash space so keep that in mind um strength yeah bandolier recommended traveling pharmacy just for convenience in terms of perception I went with 12 perception I would love to boost it to 15 with legendary perception uh, over time um, but as you can see here we do have archer expert and master archer each at rank 2 so all I would do with the extra three perception is I would boost them to rank three each, giving me just a little bit more um, damage. Um, could just be enough to one-shot uh, most super mutants and so on, but didn't really feel necessary for this occasion here. And yeah, I'm just far off from leveling up my perks uh, appropriately, and I felt like this was enough here. Um, the more important perk here, in my opinion, is bow before me. Just gives you extra armor penetration, which is always nice. Um, the stagger chance, well, it's okay, but to be honest, um, that's nothing we rely on. Uh, it's basically just, uh, the perk is just interesting for us in terms of armor penetration. And concentrated fire, well, quite obviously, we want to increase our um, benefits. Our bats hit chance with every single shot works relatively well on uh, single shot weapons rather than automatic ones, even though, as I said during the video, um, bats can definitely let you down with a with a bow, but I still recommend bats over uh, a free aim approach with the bow. It's just uh, tedious to aim, um, especially in third person. It's quite impossible, actually. Um, at least if enemies get closer, yeah, things get a bit wonky. So I really would recommend you use bats. Also, opens up a whole uh, new type of damage when it comes to crits. Let's move on here to Endurance, uh, rank 3 fireproof, uh, very low um, approach to Endurance, um, probably would be even better off with Adamantium Skeleton and just put a dense chest piece on, that would actually be the more sensible option probably, because if you're getting crippled, um, you're automatically standing up uh, if it is the legs, I think. Legs and torso, I think, if those get crippled, um, you do stand up get out of your crouching animation and that's when enemies see, detect and overwhelm you. But yeah, fireproof on the other hand, just yeah, pretty convenient, um, reduces damage from the Scorched Beast and from exploding cars, super mutant suiciders and there, uh, so on. So yeah, go for whatever you like here. Endurance is a dumpstead, um, just go for a bit of minimal protection and with fireproof you never go wrong, let's say that way. Now. On Charisma we do have rank 3 and use Tenderizer. Now, uh, very rarely do you not see me use Lone Wanderer, this is one of the cases here. Um, yeah, uh, We don't really need tankiness, um, since we're using a stealth character, we're kind of a glass cannon. And um, the AP refresh, while it would certainly be nice, you saw that we're doing kind of fine unless we're getting unlucky. Um, if um, Grim Reaper Sprint doesn't really proc or anything, so yeah, keep that in mind. But overall, I felt like Tenderizer was the better option here. Tenderizer combined with follow-through really helps us um, dealing with bosses, um, makes our follow-up shots uh, very powerful, and even if you're considering that most of the times, yeah, or oftentimes, 
when you're using the instigating effect to take an enemy down with a headshot, um, you also in the process um, do refill your critical meter, meaning that your second shot, in addition to being boosted multiplicatively by 10% from Tenderizer, and at the moment I think it's 20% from follow through, but you could boost it up to 40% if I recall correctly. Yeah, and then throw a crit into the mix. Yeah, you can do some serious damage with follow up shots, and this happens for the next few shots either way. So, yeah, it's actually not a half bad uh, build to deal with bosses, actually. Uh, working way better than expected. Um, so earlier I took down um, a Sheep Squatch and a, um, a Legendary Sheep Squatch and a Legendary um, Scorch Piece that were fighting each other. And one thing you really uh, saw was, uh, for the time they were fighting each other, um, I really didn't do a whole lot simply because I didn't gain the benefits from covered operative and so on. But once I took down the Scorch Piece, um, yeah, the Sheep Squatch actually went down relatively quickly. Now I needed something like 20 uh, arrows or so on, which sounds like a lot, but went through in like yeah, 20, 25 seconds, 30 seconds maybe. Um, so it wasn't really all that bad actually. And then we move on, intelligence. We do have rank five uh, gunsmith, just for the convenience here, nothing else we desperately need. And I wanted to have some intelligence going on that combined with all the buffs, um, yeah, we do have a little bit of intelligence in order to level up, and I think, yeah, 12th intelligence, it's okay. Um, you definitely feel that you can level up relatively quickly, I might add. And then we go on to agility, where we do have action girl, covered operative, sneak, escape artist, gun fu, and adrenaline. Now, as you can see here, uh, there's one perk point unused at the moment. Which, yeah, next time I level up, I would use that in order to boost adrenaline, uh, adrenaline to rank 4 rather than rank 3, giving us yet a bit more damage once we're uh, killing multiple enemies. But I think you can all imagine how the build uh, would have worked out with rank 4 rather than rank 3 of adrenaline, so I figured, yeah, there's no real need to wait uh, another, uh, play another hour or so until I level up, so therefore I just started the build here. Gunfu works very nice, we saw it quite a few times. Um, one thing I did uh, notice is that Gunfu seems to work very well on a bow, meaning that if you're drawing your weapon directly after killing an enemy, um, when they are at a little bit of a range, um, what seems to happen, I'm not quite sure about it, but you're firing an arrow at an enemy and immediately recharge your weapon. And that moment you recharge your weapon, the bat's hit chance seems to be locked. So, if you hit the enemy and kill it and switch to another character, you I think I never missed a, a gun full shot with the, with the bow. Um, maybe it happened even in the video or something, but yeah, gun full seems to work relatively well here. Escape artist sneak covered operative, pretty straightforward for a sneak ranged character. Um, yeah, better stealth, muffled basically, combined with yeah, getting into caution again, better. Um, so escape artist, pretty good option here, and covered operative, just plain more damage from range sneak attacks. And lastly, we do have action girl, as you saw there, we don't have a single AP refresh armor piece, we don't have lone wanderer, so uh, actually we have relatively low action point refresh, so a little bit of help in that regard isn't a bad thing. And then we do have Luck, where we do have Bloody Mess, Grim Reaper Sprint, Better Criticals, Claw Streak, Starch Jeans, and Critical Savvy. Now, Luck at 15 was just a given for this character. Critical Savvy, that's the perk I just mentioned a few times during the video. Um, yeah, only consuming 55% of our critical meter. That's That makes it enough in combination with the High Luck and the uh, Legendary effect that we can refill our crit meter so fast with a single shot. Then we do have Star Genes, which is quite obvious. And since we wanted to have 15 luck, um, yeah, we were left with one extra um, point to spend, just because Star Genes is as a very odd two uh, rank two. So I went for Class Freak because why not? Honestly, uh, you can go with whatever you like here, though. I just see I have two single ranks, uh, ranks of Class Freak here, so 
You could do Four Leaf Clover, which would be completely pointless. You could do Mysterious Stranger. That would probably be fun every now and then, but it's yeah, nothing you really need desperately here. Um, better criticals, quite obvious. If half our shots are crits, um, better criticals is very potent. More damage with them. Yeah, obviously we're going to take that. And Grim Reaper Sprint, yeah, this is basically our bread and butter in order to keep our um, vets game alive. As I said, we do have quite high agility, meaning we can get some shots in before we run out, but we really want to get Grim Reaper Sprint to proc in the process just to refill our AP bar um, so we can stay in vets easier, because as I said, action point refresh is not exactly one of our strengths. And lastly, I do have Bloody Mess, which hit or miss, um, doesn't do a whole lot anymore, but actually um, none of the crit uh, perks are necessary here because we can't uh, get crits back faster than we already do. So ultimately there wasn't a whole lot uh, you could have used here. Um, so you could go for a convenience thing, um, anything actually, and I just went for just a little bit more damage quite easily. And now Last but not least, we're going to take a look at our legendary perks. So we do have boosted our legendary agility, perception, and luck. So these just help me to get a bit more uh, perk points in the relevant situations, uh, in the relevant uh, perk trees. So quite simple here, quite straightforward. Then I do have Funky Dots. Um, as you saw, probably I do have a full set of marine armor. So Funky Dots does work on this occasion, um, giving us just a little bit of poison resistance. Um, the thing is, we do have a relatively low HP pool, so even if we are at full health, uh, or a full health build, yeah, two or three hits from a legendary Myler King or the Queen could definitely chew through our health pool very fast, and they, especially the Queens, tend to spit um, their acid attacks into the right direction, uh, even if they don't detect you, so you're definitely going to expect to be hit by some stray, um, as it spits, and yeah, Funky Dots really helps in that regard. You can go for whatever you like here. Another sensible pick would be what Rats or Master Infiltrator. Then we do have Far Flung Fireworks. Just a little bit of a gimmick going on here. It gives us a little bit more damage. Can certainly work very well if you're going against um, uh, if you're going against group targets like uh, a bunch of ghouls and anything. So, actually works relatively well on this weapon here, I might add. I think it's boosted by the stealth uh, damage as well, so works well. And then, arguably, one of the most important perks here, follow through. Um, instigating, all nice and, and cool, but um, follow through actually is one of the most powerful perks for us. So, if we don't kill an enemy in a single hit, yeah, the follow-up hit will gain the benefit from follow through, 20% extra damage multiplicatively. Um, very nice to have. Would love to have maxed it out. Um, have only maxed it out though on one of my characters. Um, so yeah, as for time at least, yeah, we have to live with rank two here. But I think it was already doing relatively well, as you can see. So that was it. I hope you enjoyed the video, sky uh, video guys. So I'm um, just going to look at the thumbnail here real quick. Um, bit disappointed with how it turned out. I think it would look cooler, but um, yeah, who would have guessed? And yeah, I hope to see you uh, in the other videos. As I said, two videos, two more builds planned for this week, uh, both in a bit of a tribal look. As I said, a bit of a rusty um, <clears throat> power armor guy with the Imposter Sheep Squatch helmet, which makes for a pretty nice combination there. Um, going with heavy weapons, kind of a war chief, um, so to speak. And the other guy I remembered has the Imposter Sheep's Watch outfit, but um, other than that, just some war paintings in the face and the mohawk. So um, that guy's going to be relatively cool. Uh, I actually look forward to release the video. It's yet another melee build, but one I really wanted to try for quite a while, and I hope to see you there, guys. So, bye.